Thank you for joining our presentation. This is Wei Huang. Today, Suravi and I are going to give you a talk on AMD Hardware Assisted BIOMMU technology. This presentation is a continuation from last KVM Forum's talk. We're going to give you a quick recap on hardware-based solution. After that, Suravi will talk about the software prototype details we put in AMD IO MMU driver and QEMU device. This presentation will also include performance results we collected from high-performance IO devices, and we are going to compare those results with software-based solution. So before we jump into the details, uh, this is a quick recap on AMD IO MMU technology. We all know that IO MMU does the DMA retranslation for endpoint device. And there's a lot of data structures needs to be programmed into IO MMU hardware by the driver. One good example is the device mod table. In the device table, each entry describes the IO property for endpoint device uh, under password. So for example, device table entry will contain the IO page table. And when the DMA coming up, that IO MMU will fetch device table entry and walk that IO page table in order to send the DMA to the right destination. All those data structures will be programmed into the a lot of configuration register in the IO MMU MMIO region. Other good example of data structure, including command buffer and event logs, those are used for communication between the software and hardware. And the management of those data structures uh, require us to have the head and tail register that's also defined as MMIO register. All in all, I want to point out that AMD IO MMU actually support two type of IO page table. The first one is called host IO page table, also called V1 table. The paper format is IO MMU specific. What it does is to do the guest PA to SPA IO retranslation used for VFIO mainly. And the second one is called V2 table, uh, also called guest IO page table. The page table format actually is x86 compatible and it could be used for DMA API. And end user is allowed to use these two tables in different fashion. For example, you can use V1 to do IO, to do IO device pass through and you can use V2 to do uh, DMA API. Uh, for example. You can also enable the MA API when you pass through a device into a guest VM. So this is the third case, the nested IO table case. Over the years, we have seen a lot of requirement from end user to enable IO MMU in a guest VM, either for guest IO protection or share virtual memory and other purpose. A lot of users use the software-based virtual IO MMU solution. We know that software-based solution needs to intercept an emulated IO MMIO register. So that could introduce extra overhead. On top of that, the IO page table management uh, is another layer of overhead that we need to take care of. In the example below, as you can see that we have a 10 gig NIC pass-through device running inside a VM and there's a virtual IO MMU in the VM that manages this device. So from guest point of view, the password device, guest IOVA will be retranslated to guest PA. That's perfect. But when you run this model on the real hardware, actually the 10 gig NIC is managed by host IO MMU. So in this case, the host IO MMU IO page table needs to do the retranslation from guest IOVA to SPA. Obviously, this is very similar to uh, shadow IO paging. And the problem with this solution is anytime the guest IO page table being updated, for example, mapping, unmapping, or invalidation, you need to reconstruct the shadow table. Because of that, that could cause performance overhead. In this slide is a detailed example of software-based IO MMU solution. It's called Ver IO IO MMU. This is a software-based solution that's vendor independent. So you can enable the IO, IO MMU for x86 or ARM guest VM. And the design of this software-based approach actually is very straightforward. It just leverage the IO framework use, IO queue 
virtual queue for the uh, uh, request and event communication. And also this device provide basic command for IO MMU management. For example, attach or detach device to a uh, domain or mapping or mapping guest VA to guest PA. We found that this uh, approach is very simple, straightforward, and actually high performance. In the later slides, we will show you some of the performance re results we collected using Ver IO, IO MMU and compared with our hardware-based solution. In the last few slides, I talk about the software-based approach problem and overhead. In order to solve this problem, uh, AMD is coming up with a hardware-assisted BIO MMU. This solution uh, is targeting to solve some of the soft performance issue of software-based approach. And it's also required for DMA into secure gas VM, such as SMP gas. So uh, this hardware solution uh, include a lot of different tricks to, talk, to solve the software-based performance issue. For example, the guest IO MMU command will be interpreted by the hardware directory. And the other example includes the head and tail register of the command buffer event log. Those will be handled by hardware as well. I also want to point out that hardware BIO MMU require us to use nested IO page table. So on the diagram right hand side, you can see that inside the guest VM, the guest IO MMU driver actually program a V2 table that translate from guest IO VA to guest PA. And on the hardware IO MMU at the bottom, the host IO MMU driver program a V1 table translate from guest PA to SPA. You can view it as a nested IO page table approach. And with that, we expect it will be perform better than shadow, paging, shadow IO page table based approach. So this is a quick recap about hardware VIO MMU. And Suravi is going to talk about the software prototype details. Hi, my name is Suravi. And in the next few sections, we're going to be discussing on the prototype of the AMD hardware assisted VIO MMU. And also we're going to look at some performance number with this prototype. So the prototype has three parts mainly. It has the key new changes that we're gonna talk about here. First, we introduced the new AMD VIOMU device model. This is different than the software AMD VIOMU that exists today. Um, with this new device model, we will allow the QMU to specify the PCI topology for VIOMU and the pass-through device. For example, on the right-hand side, you can see that we have one guest that has two NIC pass-through, which is NIC 0, 1, and 4. In this case, if you want to support VIO MMU, you need to also create two AMD VIO MMU device model, which is VIO MMU 0 and VIO MMU 1. The reason is that each, IO, each NIC belongs to different IO MMU. So in order to support the hardware base, we need to create two different instance and tie them together accordingly. And this can be done by specifying the QMU command at the bottom, for, ex for example. And QMU will use this information to generate the IBRS table that is consumed by the IO MMU driver in a gas when it initializes the VIO MMU in a gas. So the next part is the host IO MMU changes. So last year we have presented the full architecture implementation of the hardware assisted VIO MMU. This year we're gonna just recap quickly on the changes we did for the driver. Starting with the boot time initializations with the logic to detect and enable VIO MMU feature. And it will also allocate commonly used data structure, which are the domain ID table, which is used for mapping the host I domain ID to the guest domain ID. The device ID table, which is used to map the guest, sorry, the host device ID to the guest device ID. And the command buffer dirty status table, which contains um, the command buffer dirty register, dirty status register for each VM. Then when we create a VM, the host IOMU driver needs to allocate per VM data structure. And these are the guest MMIO register, the 
gas command buffer register and in the gas event log and the gas PPR log, which are per VM. So this can be seen on the right-hand side. Then it has to create the mapping for the device ID and the domain ID from host to the guest in the mapping table. And you also have to trap the access to some of the MMIO register in the, that, that access by the guest to emulate some of the values to the hardware. Let me start over. That part is not going too well. All right, can you pause? Section two, round two. Hi, my name is Saravi. And in the next few sessions, we're gonna discuss the software prototype of the AMD hardware assisted BIO review. And also we're gonna look at the performance number that we got from this prototype. So starting out with the QMU changes, we introduced a new device model specifically for AMD VIO review. The reason is that we need to be able to specify the PCI topology between the VIO MMU and the pass through devices. For example, on the right hand side, we have a guest VM that we will pass through three different NICs NIC 0, NIC 1, and NIC 4. And as you can see, NIC 0 and NIC 1 is associated with IO MMU 0, and NIC 4 is associated with IO MMU 1. When we support device pass through with VIO MIMU in this case, we need to be able to correlate the mix to its parents' IO MIMU. So in this case, we will introduce two VIO MIMU in the guest, VIO MIMU 0 and 1. And then we can specify the relationship using the QMU command line as we show below that mix 0 and mix 1 will tie, will tie to VIO MIMU 0 and mix 4 will tie to VIO MIMU 1. So this information will be used by the QMU to generate the IVRS table that will be consumed by the guest kernel to set up the VIO menu in the guest device. So the next part is the host IO menu driver change. The driver will first detect and enable the VIO menu feature and then it will allocate commonly used data structure. These structures are the domain ID table, which is used for mapping between the host domain ID to the guest domain ID. And the device ID table will be used to map the host device ID to the guest device ID. And the command buffer dirty status table, which contains the command buffer dirty status, which is here for each VM. Then when we start a VM, each VM, the host IO driver will allocate per VM data structures. And as Wei mentioned, these are the structures that use mainly for DNA remapping. And we got the guest MMIO registers, the command buffer, the event lock. And also it will create the host to guest device ID and domain ID mapping. And it will also register the trap for MMIO regions that needs to be for, needs for the programming of the VIO menu hardware. And it will also support the new IO menu commands and events. So together with both QMU and host IO menu driver, we introduce a new IOPTO interface along with the new AMD VIO menu specific um, device FS. The commands that we have here are related also with mapping of device and domain. And also another command to handle the trap of the MMIO access is happening. Then it also needs to know when the command buffer is being set up so that this can be programmed onto the hardware. And the last part is the guest CR3 table update. The guest CR3 table is specific to in the IO menu and it's used for initializing the v2 page table. So for the guest I aim the IO menu driver changes. The main change have to do with the support of nested IO page table. And in this case, the guest driver will be using the guest table or the v2 table. And it will be programmed 
for the gas IOVA to gas PA. While the VFIO driver will be using the V1 page table or the host table to do GPA to SPA. And this will allow the IOMU hardware to walk the nested page table to get gas IOVA to SPA at the end. So the changes in the driver is specific to the uh, support of the IO in the UV2 page table. And we have submitted an RFC to upstream. And if some more work that needs to be done, but this is the code that we actually use for our prototype type today. So in the next section, let's look at some performance number based on the prototype that we have just discussed earlier. And the goal of our experiment is to compare PCI device pass through performance of the AMD hardware VIOMU with other VIOMU solutions. And also to try to understand where we can make improvement in our design. In our experiment, we have four different configurations. The first one is the bare metal with no IOMU. This will help establish the baseline for our performance comparison. Then for the virtualization solution configurations, we have three different configurations. The first one is um, the guest VM with pass-through device without IOMU. And for the second one, we have the guest with pass-through device with the hardware assisted VIOMU. And this is using the changes that we have discussed in our prototype section. The third part is the word IO, IOMU solution um, configurations with the, um, the latest uh, guest kernel with the X86 word IO, I, word IO IOMU support for how to spin upstream. And the first benchmark that we look at is the FIO uh, benchmark doing random read and write. Um, we have two different devices here. First is the Samsung SSD M.2 NVMe. And then the second one is the Intel SSD U.2 NVMe, which has slightly better performance. Um, both cases are using the same Linux NVMe driver. And we are using the default configurations where we have not done any uh, performance fine tuning um, in the driver and in the benchmark. So looking at the number in the table, First two rows should be performance comparison between the bare metal with no IO MMU and the pass through with no IO MMU. And the, in this case, it will help establish the baseline of how much virtualization overhead do we have. It's actually not quite a lot. Um, except the case of the Intel write, um, we are seeing slightly bit more performance degradation with the virtualization case with no IO MMU. Now, when you look at the virtualization um, comparison between no IO MMU, hardware VIO MMU, and word IO IO MMU, we are seeing that uh, with hardware VIO MMU, we're actually getting up around um, 65 to 75, sorry, 73% performance, where we get about um, 34 to 42% performance for word IO IO MMU, except the right case where we only get about 220 megabyte per second and 127 megabyte per second for the VIO menu case. Um, looking across the board here, it seems like we are actually hitting some performance bottleneck at around 230 megabyte per second for hardware assisted VIO menu. Um, so we have not done further investigation on this, but I think this is a good data point to, to have for the for this benchmark. For the next benchmark, we are using NetPerf uh, running TCP stream. And the first device that we are using is the Intel 10 gigabit Ethernet in a dual port configurations with the physical loop back load. And one of the port is is used by the host um, running NetPerf, and then the other port is used by the guest running the server. And in both the guest, guest and the host, you're using the Linux IXGB driver. Same thing in default configuration, no fine tuning, no optimization here. And we using the 
visualization with pass through NIC with no IO in view as the baseline. And you can see that the baseline is right around the, the line rate, which is 9.4 gigabit per second. On the receiving, it seems like we're getting almost a line rate for all three virtualization configurations with no IO in view, hardware via in view, and road IO IO in view. On the sending side, with hardware via IO in view, we're getting about 83% average performance which is quite good um, in comparison to where I I own you, which only got around 24 um, gigabit per second, sorry, 24%. Um, so I think this is this is a good data point to show that the hardware I own you can, can actually help make improvement to the VIO solution on, on the network um, benchmark as well. Now, we also try it with slightly higher performance um, Nick. We're using 100 gigabit Ethernet neuron ops in the same configuration with dual port and physical loopback mode. Here we're using a different driver, which is the MLX5 core driver, um, but we have the same configurations, no um, fine tuning. Um, and if we look for the baseline with the virtualization with device pass through with no IO in view, we're seeing that we're getting around 20 gigabit per second percent in VC. But with the hardware VIO in view, we're still getting around um, 30 to 40, sorry, 30 to 50 percent performance. And for the road IO IO in view, we're getting about 13 and 42 percent performance average. Um, so here we would expect that um, it should be getting higher performance based on the higher performance hardware, make hardware. But when we compare between Intel and Mellanox, we are seeing that it's actually hitting right around the same bottleneck in both cases. So we would like to understand this better, uh, whether this is going to be a software related or some of the implementation specific for the hardware VIO that we, that we design. Um, investigation we did was to run um, curve utility with uh, kernel trace point in the gas and also perf utility with the IOMU performance counter on the host. And what we found is in the gas, the gas IOMU driver actually is doing a lot of IOMU page invalidations. And this is due to the mapping and the mapping of, of, of pages in the guest. Um, and what happened here is when you invalidate a page, it invalidates the translation in the TLB, causing TLB misses for the subsequent DNA access, and the IO menu has to walk the page table. Now, in case of hardware VIO menu, this table walk is going to be nested, so it will incur slightly higher latency um, than a single level, a single layer page wall. Um, also, the, the the observation we have seen here with regards to invalidation of pages, um, this is not actually specific to hardware VI only solutions, because we know that even with the bare metal case um, with I/O and U, this would be a bottleneck as well. The key takeaway here would be. If we can improve the invalidations of pages of IO menu, it will help in both um, bare metal case and in hardware VI menu case here as well. So in summary, uh, the AD hardware VI menu actually shows improvement in PCI pass through IO performance for the guest IO protection use case when comparing to other software VI menu solutions. And some of the improvements that we would like to focus is to get to work on better IO and then VTLB validation scheme to reduce the number of invalidations and number of page table walks that hardware has to do. And there are some improvement that we can do here because um, currently in the implementation of AMD IO and U, there are two types of TLB invalidations. If it's a single page invalidation, it will basically invalidate 
just that page. But if you need to invalidate more than one page, then you invalidate everything. So there's going to be more pages that, that we need to uh, do a table walk to get the translation. So that's one area of improvement that you can do that might help with the situation. As far as, as, far as the next step, um, we were working on upstreaming the prototype to Linux community and QMU. And we also will be looking at experimenting with other VIO use case. Uh, another aspect would be to find a solution where we can have hybrid VIO models, where we can have both software VIO and hardware VIO on the same guest. Because currently, the hardware VIO is used for the pass through device, where the software VIO is used for the emulated device. So with the hybrid model, we can have the fully protected guessing. And another aspect of uh, hardware VIO is to support the interrupter mapping, uh, which currently is under development. Thank you. And next we'll be opening for more questions and discussion.